I snack on fruit all day. I've got my own little garden now. Yeah. For now, it's just carrots, onions, and uh, beets. And I tried to plant peas, but as soon as they started sprouting and little green leaves started coming out, a bunch of birds just dug them out. So I have no peas anymore. Maybe I should get a strawberry plant because these are great. Is there something in, in too messy? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm an Instagram or like I, I'm kind of like an influencer artist hybrid, I guess. Um, I mostly do my own like freelance paintings, just stuff for myself. Um, and besides that, I do a lot of selfie drawing. So I'll take a picture of myself and then I have like my outfit that I draw next to it. I do a lot of fan art, character art basically is like my thing. If they have seen my work before, it's probably like one of my big club fan arts or something like that. Or the Disney redraws back in the day that I used to do. Uh, I've been around for a little bit now. Sometimes when I look for inspiration and new artwork, for example, on Pinterest, my own work shows up now. Well, it depends on like what I've been searching up all week. But if I'm looking at like character art, sometimes I'll like see my own stuff and I'm like, it's not helpful. I need inspiration. <laughs> but then I'm like, oh, wait, I used to draw like that. Huh, that's pretty good. I could do that again. <laughs> I'm really fortunate to be able to make a living um, doing Instagram. So most of my clients are people like um, Adobe or Wacom or MSI or sometimes clothing companies. Uh, I work with Instagram, those people. I just, I get to do basically what I love. I get to work on my own stuff most of the time. Sire written, yeah. It's uh, based on two shades of blue. Cause okay, this is really nerdy, but we had like a friend group and we all had like our color. So I went by blue, which was my nickname on my, you know, on Instagram, I couldn't register that anymore. Cause it was like, it's obviously a thing. Um, so I created like Sire and it's like having a sort of identity online based off of that. But it's kind of punny because in Dutch, uh, obviously, Blue is blau, so it was blau da, haha, <laughs> blau powers. <laughs> Terrible. Anyway, that's kind of like the nerdy side. The geeky side is the fact that we were pretending to be Power Rangers. So we had like our Power Ranger uniforms in like different colors. And blue obviously looks, you know, great with the red hair. So I was like, anyway, that's the story. I just combined two shades of blue and I made it into a nice little username. DeviantArt, I think, because I, um, I don't remember what my old username was before that, but I had been a member for, I don't know, I, I must have been like in my early teens. Yeah, I needed a, a sort of rebrand and when you could change your username for the first time, uh, I took the opportunity, I was like, okay. And then Instagram came shortly after and then Twitter. And then I had to add the E because Siren was already taken. But so the funny story is like, it's, it's taken by a woman who has a first name that starts with a C and then has Yarin as our last name. So it's just her name that she registered. But for some reason, like it was just this private Instagram. She had maybe like 50 followers, like five posts on there. It was all hidden. And I didn't know this woman, but she's blocked me now. But apparently people have been messaging her to such an assessing degree to like, give me back my username give me back my username, which I never had, that she got so annoyed that she blocked me and said, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this random woman in the US somewhere got harassed by people. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> but I don't mind. People are always like, oh, so is it different? So they pronounce the Instagram one Sirene and then Sirin, the other one. Yeah, I did a few jobs for them in the past few years. Uh, pretty much during the pandemic, I got to know them, which has been really weird because I've been on their platform since I was young and I, that's where I got inspired to be a digital artist in the first place. Cause when I started on there, I didn't have a drawing tablet yet. I thought I wanted to be a photographer um, because I thought to be, to make money with artwork, I needed to either be a kid's book writer so I could illustrate them myself. Cause only authors are ever on the front covers. It's never the illustrators. So I thought I have to be a kid's book writer in order to make money and be able to do art for a living. And then I thought when I got like a little bit older and I was a teenager, I was like, okay, I'll be a photo photographer in my like daily job and then I'll draw on the side. So that's what I started with. And then I made a change to drawing. Yeah, my parents caved and they bought me a cheap 
Wacom tablet when I was young. I, I got the Wacom Volito, which is like before the bamboo. My cat is named Bamboo. Everybody thinks that I named her after the tablet, but it was already his name at the shelter. So. I mean, it's everybody's dream, obviously. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'll, I, I can play it down and whatever, but I had fantasies as a kid where I would speak in front of my mirror and pretend to get an award or something, or like, you know, do public speaking about overcoming my difficulties while I was in the midst of my difficulties. And now I actually get to do that. You know, how many people can do that sort of stuff? It's, uh, it's. Yeah, it's definitely a dream come true in a lot of ways for me. I tend to kind of undersell myself a lot. I'm trying not to do that as much anymore because I know that it will just make people feel awkward and I can be proud of where I am today. So yeah, that's something that I try to embrace as well. I just, you know, present myself in that way where I can be like, hey, well, I, I did this and I worked for it and I get to speak now, which is really great. So a lot of my followers have followed me for a long time. So there are a few new people, a few uh, familiar faces, people that I've seen grow up, like that would show up at their uh, at my booths when they were like 11 or 12. And now they're like students, like fully grown, making their way in the art world. And some of them come up to me and they're like, oh, it, uh, like you're the reason why I pursued studying art. And I thought I could do that. And I just feel bad for them because it's, you know, it's such a like... <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I'm so sorry, because now you're cursed to work really late nights. <laughs> but no, I mean, I'm really happy doing what I do. And uh, I, yeah, it's really nice to hear that I influenced them in some sort of nice way. I just feel like I'm in like a strawberry commercial. <laughs> a lizard. <laughs> I don't know, maybe if there's a multiverse, there's probably a lizard multiverse version of me. I don't know. Uh, so... Okay, I kind of had like different paths. So when I was going to school, the expectation was that, you know, I would probably do like photography or architecture or something like that because that's practical like designer jobs. Um, maybe I would have taken a brave detour of going the graphic design route or something like that. I also really liked history and biology and I did well in those, but I unfortunately got kicked out. So that's, I guess like the only the only thing that I could see myself doing differently, like I'm actually educated and I'm like eloquent and I know what I'm doing. Although I kind of taught myself to know what I'm doing nowadays, but I've been talking about this thing because I really like hosting and I like uh, like organizing like parties and like brunches and all that sort of stuff. So I think I would, and I, I, work, I used to work in an ice cream shop and I really like, I miss it a lot. I just simply don't have the time now. But I think I would really enjoy something like that. And I would probably make it something like fairy teens. So I have an excuse to put on elf ears all day and like wear like a little apron and like have little mushroom cups or something for people to drink out of. Whenever I saved up enough money, I can start a little cafe where people can go and sit and draw. Uh, I grew up reading a lot of Royal Doll with my parents. They kind of like, not to be like, oh, self-inserting, but they're always like, you're a little Matilda because I had my issues being autistic and I related to her story, uh, I think in some way. I think everybody will relate to her because she is so relatable, but yeah, it was nice to have this girl character be something other than just like, shy or like just you know the help of something she was like the center of attention so that's and the illustrations of that always like cheered me up although my actual childhood and my favorite artist back then was Anton Pieck obviously you know Brabantse Trots <laughs> the Efteling is like a place that I still go to I hopefully I get to go and take some of the people that are visiting here for playgrounds but um the Efteling is like intertwined with my childhood and um, I grew up, like, we had these huge uh, editions of Anderson and Grimm fairy tale books that were illustrated by him. Um, and I would make, like, little dioramas of his artwork and I would cut them out. You know, you make, like, 3D cards and then we put them in a little frame. It was so cute. But, yeah, still nowadays, I feel like a lot of his work... Sometimes it reminds me almost of things like Bruegel or Bosch uh, artworks, but kind of more whimsical and like 80s sort of fantasy almost, which like is my heart. You wouldn't say so because I barely do fantasy art nowadays. It's all very fashion focused, but 
Maybe I'll like make the switch back to making more fantasy themed stuff at some it's, point. It's, it's still there. It's in my heart. It's in my soul. Like I just I don't take the time to draw it. I don't feel like I'm good enough for it. I think so. I started drawing mostly guys, which is really ironic because I'm mostly known for drawing girls now. The problem was that I was drawing a lot of male characters because I found that they were more interesting, they were more three-dimensional, so I related to them more, and that's why I ended up creating male characters as well. Um, and then I was like, wait, I can change that. I can make fun female characters, and I can draw the ones that I did like as a kid. So that's what I ended up doing, basically. I, uh, I threw it all around. My style was very angular, and then I went really soft for a little while because I was very influenced by... A lot of people like uh, Kelsey Beckett, a lovely traditional painter, Loish, another Dutch artist. Um, so my style really emulated their softness as well. Um, and I was really influenced by fantasy artists as well. So that's also a little bit softer, a little bit more flowy. And then I went towards a more fashion-y sort of thing. Uh, and there were more angular shapes. I was more bold with the makeup choices. And I tried to diversify my characters in terms of faces because I was drawing a lot of the same kind of faces around the time. So I'm still on that journey. I'm still learning to properly light. Um, I'm currently really involved into learning how to paint skin because I work mostly in one layer. So yeah, I feel like it's, it's changed a lot over time, but I'm happy where it went. <laughs> I got oil paints recently and I've been trying it out because I already work in one layer digitally. The only thing is just, you know, learning to mess with the medium and, and see how it responds on, on the actual canvas. But I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's uh, it's easier than I expected it to be. I expected the transition to be really tough, but I got some nice quality paints. We're very lucky to have some good friends here in the Netherlands with the old masters, of course. So yeah, that's the next step. Um, just for fun on the side. I always feel like when somebody is like, oh, who's your favorite? Or like, who inspires you? Or like, whatever. I always forget to say the ones that actually, that I look up to so much. So there's too many. Uh, I feel on the spot. I want to learn to do environments as well as uh, Ilya Kupchinov does. He's so good at them. I'm like, He's mostly known for his like cute girl illustrations and a lot of the girls with the short hair now. And that's what gets shared on social media because people like seeing a quick face. But his environment work is wonderful. I love it. So that's something I want to learn. <laughs>